And uh, last night, that was hard to watch. Um, and, and there's a few different angles I think you could take on this thing, Jake. One that I'm seeing a lot of is, uh, you know, what, what like the NFL needs to figure something out. There doesn't need to be a game like that last night. Um, I think that's true going forward into the future. I think that's also probably true of kind of society as a whole as we go into the future, right? But, like, I'm not going to sit here and complain about it today because I do think it's kind of irrelevant today. Like, you're not going to be able to just um, – you, you you can't change these protocols in the yeah. in, in, in the middle of the season, right? Everybody's been playing by them all year, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, you have to do it. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. I think the thing that frustrated a lot of people are it is that you had – this set of rules that made it sound like like you weren't going to have games if you had this many people out mm. with COVID, but you've had the games. And if yeah. it's about player safety, like you're talking about, then did in book look safe? <laughs> I mean, I mean, this guy's getting just tattooed. Oh, I mean, the referees weren't protecting book at all. I mean, helmet to helmet, it didn't matter. I mean, he's just getting waylaid now. Like Cesar Ruiz, like. Bud, you you sh you're not part of the backups off the street that are playing. Like, what are yeah. you doing? We'll get to you in a little bit, but that didn't look very safe. And you've got a team out there missing so many people, and it's just I think that's what makes a lot of people mad. Is you're talking about protecting the players, making sure they're safe, but yeah. we're kind of joking. But I mean, that's a lot of truth. When you got guys off the street, guys off the practice squad going against like first round picks because the Dolphins, you know, they've got healthy guys on, on the defensive line, their first round picks. And you've got guys just because that's the way that it worked out with your positive test and you're out there getting waylaid. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's awful. I'm, I'm trying to make myself feel a bit better by, by saying, okay, it's just the universe kind of karmically balancing things out for the free win you got against the Broncos last year where the NFL made them play with like a, like <laughs> the same situation, like a quarterback yeah. at quarterback. But, um, so whatever, like I, so so again, I I don't think it's like it is what it is. I guess it is 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 the sorry simple truth of of the situation in that regard. So I'm like, okay, but I get paid to come up with interesting ways of viewing things, and it is tough to come up with an interesting conversation. Like I kept thinking about, it, I kept thinking about it, and 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 to me, the most striking part about all of this is the most interesting angle may be the lack of an interesting conversation like it's it's really tough to think about how you make um because because what do we use games for we use them to gain information right we use them to try to predict what will happen because of what we just saw uh and the problem is what you just saw feels kind of irrelevant to the future because you were basically playing with an offense. It looked like guys who had crossed the picket line back at the strike. I mean, it you, really did. You're playing with like an offense straight out of the replacements. It was Shane Falco esque. I'm just, I'm shocked that like John Favreau wasn't out there, a linebacker. That's right. John Favreau was the SWAT linebacker. Look it up. He was great. And uh, so, yeah, man. And, and then it's like, okay, well, well, surely we learned something about Ian Book. I mean, no, not really. Like, Maybe he would have had a chance if he had his full of line. And I mean a hard maybe, because even then, think about it. This is a rookie who's not just a rookie, but kind of a project rookie. Like, this yeah. is not like somebody that you're heavily invested in. So you combine that then with James Hurst, Calvin Throckmorton, Eric McCoy, Cesar Rees, and Kayla Beninich. Beninich? But, uh, uh, Mario, how, how, how do you pronounce it? I believe you had it right the first time, Beninich. Beninich. And, uh, and then... The, the, the extra spice in that awful gumbo is the fact that you're facing the literal hottest team in the NFL who blitzes more than any yeah. team in the league, 70% of pass plays, and you see exactly how you ended up with the disaster of last in night. In eight sacks. Oof. In some of those, like Ian Book, a couple of them, he like, could have thrown it away. Some of them are fourth downs. He's just trying to make a play. He's trying to you know extend the play as long as he can. But he didn't have a lot of help. I mean, it was... The ball snapped to him, and within like one second, someone is free off the edge, free up the middle. There was a lot of people that were just running free yeah. on that Dolphins defense straight to the quarterback. There was nothing he could do. Well, well which receiver is going to make you pay? Right? Like, if you go cover zero, which receiver is going to make you pay? And then is Ian Book going to be able to make the decision fast enough? Can the O-line sort it out when it's literally like guys off the street? I mean, look, everybody's right there going the wrong way. It's just... He, he was a clown show. Like he didn't. He looked like the Monstars took his talent last night. Mm. Caesar Ruiz has not had a great year, 
But last night, he was throwing more no-hitters than Nolan Ryan. Ugh. I mean, he wasn't touching people. And it was just – it was painful to watch. Ducking his head on a swim move. I mean, okay, I T, I, T, I was it's about to ask feeling. you this. T, I don't know if you've ever been in this situation. You probably more than I. There's a point when you do one-on-ones. And during training camp, you'll do one-on-ones a lot more than you do in the season. And it's a defensive drill. Like, we know that. But still, you want to win – and you'll get the yips in one on ones. You'll get the yips. Yeah. I got the yips. I'm I've, sure you I've, did as oh, well. Oh, wow, I've bad never rushers. Thought about that. Yeah. I 1,000 percent have had the yips in one. I'm talking about like bad thousand rushers percent. with bad pass uh, rush moves will beat you because yeah. you have the yips in one on ones. That looked like training camp yips last night yeah. for Cesar Ruiz. I don't know what he had well, going you know, you're on. You're scared of the bull rush, then you're trying to take him on, and then you just then start doing like, this. Yeah, and then so you throw your head forward, and next thing you know, you're on the ground and they're by you. You can't like. The they did not so help true. Ian Book whatsoever. Kamara had nowhere to run. I'm amazed that he had four yards of carry. That offensive line, and we know the the reason, but you still you had a couple of starters and your swing guy in there. Like it should have looked better than it did last night. You can't have first round picks out there next to a second round pick that's one of the better centers in the NFL look like they did last night. That was some of the the worst offensive line play that I've seen at that high of a level in a long time. Yeah, I, I feel what you're saying there. So it's like, whatever, like Benedict Hurst and Throckmorton, it kind of is what it is. Uh, but for Ruiz to feel like the biggest Achilles heel coming out of that is uh, is pretty disappointing, especially considering, uh, well, especially considering a couple of things. Uh, first off, that you've been very good at drafting these O-linemen with these early picks besides Caesar. I mean, I'd be interested to compare him and Pete through two years, kind of where would they be at grade-wise and everything. But you've been pretty good in that regard. And secondly, Jake, the other disappointing part about all of this is that the Saints' defense continues to play with their hair on fire. And even that is without some of their best pieces and obviously the heart and soul that we all love so much in uh, Demario Davis. But, like, the Saints' defense still played tough and that D-line played I gave well it 13 enough. points, I mean, because of the inception. Yeah. No, like that D-line – Played well enough to where if you could have just had anything resembling an attack from the offense, you could have had a chance to win that game. And make no mistake, we'll look at the playoff picture later, but it is a critical game. And make no mistake about this, you are hurtling towards a Week 17 matchup with Atlanta that could, in fact, decide a playoff spot. Not for one, but for both teams, as both teams currently sit at 7-8 and eight right now. Uh, again, we'll go into the playoff picture a bit later, but just a disaster. Uh, how about this? Third time in franchise history not converting a third down with at least 12 attempts. 0 of 12 on third down. First time since 1997. Hey, guess what? The Dolphins are going to run cover zero on third down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, they were just they were bringing everybody on third down. They knew they couldn't stop it. Like you said, it's a great point. They knew there was nobody that could get out in route that yeah. would affect it. Uh. Kamara was having to stay in to try to protect. Because it was so bad, you couldn't even get your best weapon out because you were trying to keep him in just to give you some protection. Ingram was coming in to try to help give you some protection as well. It didn't matter because there was multiple guys that were going to be free with a free path to the quarterback. I just, I understand who they had up again, but not to make that adjustment on zero, like they had to do something and they couldn't, they just couldn't. No matter what they did, they couldn't get the Dolphins blocked. Yeah, the Saints offense, um, Robert Mays tweeted this, and I thought it was pretty interesting. He says, there's a real ship of Theseus feel to the Saints offense. The only reason I've even heard of the ship of Theseus was Scarlet Witch, was it? Uh, WandaVision. Yeah. You watched WandaVision, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. Remember they were talking about the ship of Theseus, and it's like, okay, you have a ship, and over time you replace every single plank in that ship. Is it still the original ship, right? right. Well, that's kind of like this Saints offense right now. Like Even with Sean Payton, at what point... Does the Saints offense, it, at what point is it no longer the offense? And, and I, I feel that it's clear. I don't know if this answers yeah. the Theseus paradox, but I feel that it's clear that, no, this is not the Saints offense anymore. And, and although Sean Payton at times this year has done a, 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 a really spectacular job, you think about some of the early game plans with Winston and, and despite having no receivers, still finding ways to manufacture success, uh, there, there, there's a breaking point in all things in life. And unfortunately, the Saints offense has just reached – that breaking point. And, and and it feels like it's something that can't now now you can still make the playoffs. And hell yeah, I'll be cheering for it. We'll be we'll be excited for it. But like it's something that feels like you can't fix the ship until the offseason. Like it's gonna need some major maintenance repairs and upgrades. And then maybe 
and can regain that title of the Saints offense. It is that side of the ball because your defense, you've still got key pieces. You can plug a couple of different guys in and the defense last night even, like you mentioned, I mean, the way that they played, that's a very good unit. If you can keep Dennis Allen and he doesn't become a head coach again, you feel good about that yeah. side of the football. You've locked up some of your your young stars uh, for you know multiple years. Offensively, though, it, you just like you don't feel great about quarterback. You don't feel I- any any comfort at receiver. You don't probably feel anything at tight end right now, right? Yeah, You're, you got a couple of offensive line pieces, but after Ruiz has played the last couple of games and really this year in its entirety, you don't feel good about a couple of your offensive line positions. Running back, you feel really good. Obviously, you have Alvin Kamara. There's more than just one leak in this in this ship. <laughs> yeah, I think, and, 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 and it's funny because so much of the potential solution is tied to a guy that you just haven't been able to rely on in Mike Thomas, right? I mean, Very like, fair, that, yeah. that that makes up for a lot yeah. of ground in one of those key leaky Yeah, don't go look, and, and don't go look who was drafted after Cesar Ruiz. Just uh, trust me. Who was it? Like, just don't do it. I mean, you take your pick. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, uh, Patrick Queen. Oh. You can go T. Higgins, pretty yeah. good day. Michael Pittman Jr., DeAndre Swift. Jonathan Taylor, he's pretty good. Wow. Yeah, so. A list. Okay, okay. That's enough. Chase that. Claypool, That's enough Trayvon of that. Diggs. That's enough of that. Uh, when we get back here on All the Bench, we've got Jaylen Chris Hurts. Lowe, college football writer for ESPN. Come by. Keep Van alive. Jefferson. OTV. <laughs> 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 